What is going on, Covenant fam? I um, know it's been a minute, and it's because I'm at home, and I'm on um, my leave from the truck so that I could have my baby. Um, and uh, I just wanted to kind of touch bases with you guys and uh, let you guys know I'm still here for questions and um, um, comments, concerns, anything that you guys have as far as the company or, um, you know, situations that you might run into and um, stuff like that. So um, I did a home time video and I never... At least I don't remember covering the basis for um, when you and your co-driver take uh, time off, like to go home. Um, it's always best to do it in sync, like together, because if one takes off the second week of the month and then some, the, the other co-driver wants to take off the last week of the month, like it throws it off because not only do you have to find a temporary co-driver to run with which makes it complicated it's already hard enough to team as it is right um but you also are not gonna have the same time on your clocks and um um you're not gonna have the same days like in your um in your in your bank like we call it a, a like a ETO bank. It's your earn time off bank. So basically, each week that you're out, you gain a day, right? So let's say that excuse me one of one of you stays out eight weeks, but the other one took their days off, and let's say they took three days off, okay? Um, but they took it like on the six, six week mark, right? So that means that the co-driver that stayed out for eight weeks is going to have two extra days in their bank, right? And then the driver that was only out for six weeks, uh, yeah, only out for six weeks and went home for three days. Not only did you minus three days from your bank, but you didn't gain any more during the time that you were at home, Right. So your co-driver is going to have more days off in the bank than, than you will, depending on which one stayed out for eight weeks. So it's always wise to coordinate with each other. And that's why I say like communication is everything when it comes to teaming and taking time off. Because let's say that someone wants to celebrate an anniversary, right? It's a wedding anniversary, relationship anniversary, some type of anniversary. It's important. Um, and they want to take that time off. The other driver, I would hope, would be considerate to that and also take that time off. Find, you know, something that, that's close to that date that you could also celebrate with your loved ones or... Um, you know, friends, if you want to take a trip that you've been putting off for a while, something, make it kind of worth it. So what my co-driver and I did is we talked about like our favorite times, our favorite holidays. Um, we actually lucked out and both of our birthdays are in October. So, um, you know, we typically uh, mesh well with taking time off that's not going to work for everyone but what i'm saying is try to get as close to it as possible because if not you're going to have a situation to where it's like one of you's off the other one's working then the other one wants to okay well i stayed out long enough now i want to go home and the one that's coming back from home time is like hey well i just got back you know and now i need to make some money or i need someone to run with so it just kind of throws everything off. Now, you don't have to take time off when your co-driver takes time off. But if you don't, it makes things so much more difficult. So it's just always better to make sure that you guys are on the same page. So that it's not hard for you guys to 
coordinate those days off, come back at the same time. Your 70 hour clock for the week starts at the same time. Um, you know, you guys earn the same time off, you know, the, the same days, you know, because you stayed out the same length of time. So it just benefits a whole lot more um, doing it that way. And it just, things will run a lot smoother, not only for yourselves, your truck, but it also runs smooth for the company and for your fleet team. You don't want your fleet team getting stressed out trying to figure out how they're going to keep the truck running and, um, you know, make sure that loads can get picked up and lanes are covered and this and that, you know, um, because it's hard. It's hard to schedule, you know, one and then not the other and then keep track. And then when the other one comes back and then the other one goes home and it's like, it's just, it's too much. So it's just always best to make sure that you guys are coordinating together so that it's not difficult all around okay um there was something else i wanted to talk about and i can't think of it right now i hate when my brain does this um i'm sorry guys i hate when my brain goes mush and i can't um I can't get it out what I've been trying to say this whole time. <laughs> um, so that's just one thing about, you know, home time or a few tips for home time and stuff like that. Uh, as far as co-drivers go. Now, I tried assisting in, you know, um, I don't want to say teaming drivers because I never teamed drivers together. That. That's not something that I do or was part of my my dis my job description or anything like that. And I was going to put my visor down because the sun, but I got stuff up there and I don't want it to all fall down. Um, I did my hair, guys. Fourth of July, red, white, and blue. Woo -woo. Um, so I never teamed drivers because that's not my job. And I don't care to take other people's jobs because that's just not what I do like your job title and, and uh, responsibilities are your own um, I actually like being a driver so I don't want that kind of responsibility but I did try to assist and help as far as teaming goes and when I see drivers tagging or posting and drivers for covenant looking for partners i will tag someone that is in the same area or you know close to as close to it as possible um and oh it is completely empty today and it's completely empty today Whoop. <clears throat> All right, sorry, I had to get here. So, anyway, um, lost my train of thought. Oh, when I would see drivers tag, um, posting that they're looking for a co-driver and they're based out of Jacksonville, Florida, and I see the name of who posted, and then like maybe um, I'll keep scrolling, and then I'll see that yesterday. A driver with a different name posted that they're looking for a co-driver based out of Jacksonville Florida um, I'll tag either one or the other on the post so that that way it will notify them that someone is looking for a co-driver like that but I always say that you have to clear it with your fleet team I am NOT a teaming coordinator I'm not a fleet manager I'm not any of that. I'm a regular driver. So I would at least get you guys on each other's radar so that that way you're able to send a message to each other, discuss things, your, your likes, your dislikes, uh, your preferences, all that stuff. Once you guys discuss that and you're like, okay, I think this is going to work. We're going to team. 
and then your next move would be to talk to your fleet team. Now, if you both have a different fleet team, then you each need to talk to your fleet team because they're the ones that coordinate who's moving trucks. They're the ones that coordinate which team you're going to permanently be on. So that's why it's important for you guys to deal with that. I don't do that. I don't deal in that. So it's like, you know, Javon is looking for a co-driver based out of Jacksonville, Florida, and Christopher is also looking for a co-driver. So Christopher and Javon talk to each other, and then they reach out to their fleet teams, and then they say, hey, this is what it is. We've already talked it out. We've already discussed where we're going to meet up at, where we're going to leave the truck. You have everything laid out they will definitely work with you. I'm not saying they will approve you to be co-drivers, but if it makes sense and you guys have everything worked out, it's like at least, I want to say an 88% chance that they're going to team you and say, okay, that's cool. Let's get this done, right? Then they'll message you guys and they'll tell you, okay, who's turning in their truck, who's, you know, um, what fleet team you're going to be on so if Javon is on team two and Christopher's on team six they'll tell you okay you guys are no longer you, Javon's no longer on team two Javon's going to move over to team six so that means that Christopher gets to keep his truck because his truck is already aligned with team six do you understand what I'm saying uh, or it could be vice versa Christopher might lose team six and his truck and then just move over to team two with Javon and be you know on that excuse me on that team so that's what I'm assuming happens and that's how it works because I do know that it's harder to move a truck from a team than it is to move a driver to a team um so that's just based off of what I know and what discussions I've had with um my fleet manager so um yeah so that's what I try to do I cannot do that um on the drivers for covenant page I cannot um give pointers because the teaming coordinators get all you know panties in a bunch boxers twisted and they think that I'm trying to step on toes and take their job I don't care to take their job. I don't want a desk job, right? I just hate seeing drivers struggling to find co-drivers. I hate seeing drivers sit and not make money because in office, they're making money and they get to go home. You guys being on the page, begging for a co-driver and continuously posting and posting is really bothersome to me because it's like it's almost like they're leaving you to fend for yourself and I'm not saying that that's how it is that's how it seems to me because they used to have something in place and for some reason they got rid of that and now they're doing a, oh we'll email you a list of drivers that are looking for a potential co-driver or um they will set up those those team meetings and um have them in the terminal or whatever most of those drivers either a don't show up b they show up and they just sit there or stand there and stare at each other they don't really interact with one another and it's so strange because you need to do that in order to find a co-driver but at the same time it's like we're also kind of used to being i don't want to say a shut-in but um it's hard to approach someone else. You know what I mean? To approach someone, you know, talk to them and and get to know them. It's awkward. It's weird. It's so much easier to do it behind the phone or behind the computer or something like that. And then when you feel comfortable enough, then you meet up. It's kind of like online dating, right? I don't know if any of you done online dating. I have um, before I got married. So it's like... It's so much easier because you could be yourself or not <laughs> behind the phone or the computer. And um, when it actually comes time to the meetup part, it's, you know, your nerves are not as bad. You know, you're still nervous. You're still like, oh, my God, like it's finally happening. I'm actually going to see this person face to face. 
but um, it's not as bad because you had time to talk to them and get to know them or at least, you know, hear what they have to say. And then when you actually do meet them in person, um, you get to feel them out and you get to put the visuals with, you know, what you're hearing and all that other stuff. So um, I don't think that the system they have now is very effective. And I'm not talking crap yet again. I'm not doing that. I just wish they would take the help that I have offered to give them um, more than once, actually more than twice. And it's real, it's basically really simple. Not only do you know which drivers are looking for co-drivers, right? But you also know what geographical area that they need to find a co-driver in. So who, what better person to do that than the one that has all the information? In office, they have your names, your driver IDs, your addresses. They can do a quick Google search and be like, okay, these drivers are within radius. Let's see if they would like to team together. If not, and it's not going to work, then you start expanding outward and you find someone else. But you always do the closest, most possible, or most likely, you know, connection or whatever. Um, so that's what I do. I literally see drivers uh, posting on Drivers for Covenant. I'll see what area they're from. And I'll do a Google search, you know, on maps. I'll see who's closer to which borders and this and that or whatever. And then I'll tag the drivers on each other's posts so that that way they get the alert that they've been tagged on a post, right? And then they look at it and then they get to read the driver's post that they posted and then they get to send each other private messages. They get to talk if they want to exchange numbers, so on and so forth to where they can get to know each other. And then if it is a possible match, then you take it to your fleet team. Then your fleet team will run it by the teaming coordinators, etc. And they're the ones that give the yay or the nay. And I don't think that's very hard. Um, in my opinion, it's not. I, you know, I, I've successfully done this process. And a few drivers have gotten good co-drivers and have stayed together for a long time. But I did not nor approve or deny them being teamed together. I just kind of put them in each other's view. Um, and then I have the video of how to team successfully. So these are the things that you need to get out in the open, you know, what your preferences are, the respect, the communication, you know, all that stuff. So that that way that team can last a long time because that is how you make your money. Um, because if you're constantly switching co-drivers, you're not going to make money. You're going to sit. And um, it, it's like you have to get everything out in the open and make sure that it is going to be a well-meshed team. And that's what I try to focus on. That is my goal to get you guys in a position to where you are set up for success. So home time is really, really big. You guys that also goes in with teaming, um, home time, you need to be within 250 miles radius of your co-driver. So let's say that, um, someone lives on the, uh, Northeast side of Texas. We'll say somewhere in Houston, right? No north yeah northeast side of texas um we'll say houston and what's close by there what what's up uh, louisiana is um a bit more west of i mean a bit more east of um houston right louisiana and then what's above that i think i'm not looking at a map right now so I'm trying to go like off my brain. I don't memorize the map of the United States, but if you're looking at the map, you see where Houston is, you can kind of gauge that area of like the next state. So they don't technically have to be in your state as long as it's close enough. If you're close to a state border, like a state line, then you have that 
possible opportunity to t uh, team with someone that technically does not live in your area but yet you're still within the, the mileage range so that that way you guys will be able to team together a lot of drivers think that they have to be within that city and state the same as them that is a very hard to do so the point is to get as close as you can and get teamed get out here and make this money um so if you guys have any questions for me please let me know um i gotta go inside but um i just thought i would touch bases with you guys let you know i'm still alive and kicking i am off the truck for two months so please hang in there with me um i don't want to lose subscribers speaking of which i'm almost at a milestone i'm almost at 200 subscribers i'm super excited so i will have a milestone video for that um but i just don't have it right this second <laughs> um but when i do i will definitely post that for you guys but um yeah I'm going to be off the truck for two months, so I come back August 9th, and um, I would hope that I still have subscribers left. I will touch bases with you guys so I don't leave you flat and go two months solid with no videos, but um, it's going to be kind of hard for me to do that because my schedule is chaotic and complete. It's just crazy. So <laughs> um, I will definitely... Um, get you guys more stuff give you guys more tips and things on how to successfully team it is possible i've been with covenant for going on five years and i've teamed the whole entire time it is really not that difficult and um just follow my tips you'll be able to find someone and um team successfully and if you have any issues please let me know so that that way i can kind of help you through the situation but until next time, guys, uh, bye.